In this video, I'm going to show you some of the powerful features of Crossword Compiler's professional grid filler. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to use an American puzzle, which is one of the harder types of puzzle to fill. So I start an American puzzle. I can choose a size, 15 by 15 is fairly standard. The first professional grid filler feature is fit theme words at the top here. I could just choose a grid pattern that's provided manually. But if I have a particular set of words that I want to use, I can click fit theme words and type in some words. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to try and fit three words which contain the word demo. Demo in Cloud Monet, demo in demonstration, and demo in pandemonium. There are some options about where you place the words, place symmetrically, put them in nicely in symmetric positions. You can also choose to place them in the order that you've listed here. If you click OK, it will then search the grid library for all the grids that will fit the words and show you what they look like. You can then preview the different grids and see which ones you like. You can check whether the grid is fillable by clicking this fill around button. If you click that, the professional grid filler will then try and fill around your words. And in this case, it didn't work. But if I choose a different grid, perhaps that one, I will get a fill. If I don't like the fill and I want to go back, I can just click cancel and choose a different grid. Click fill around, it gets filled. If I like it, I can press accept. Of course, you can also customize the fill. One of the most powerful features of the professional grid filler is the manual word selection feature that lets you choose which word goes where. So I'll start again with a blank American puzzle with some grid pattern, it doesn't matter which very much. And I'm going to use fill grid with custom options. And here I can select a word list to use. Here are some of the provided additional word lists or the default list. I'll just use the default list for now and I'm going to choose manual word selection. Manual word selection then lets you choose each word in turn. If I don't like the slot that's been chosen, I click on that word, it'll show me the possible words for that word slot. You can click on the words to preview them in the grid. They're ordered here by score, so better ones are near the top. So let's go for dinner service. I double click, it will insert it in the grid, and move on to the next word. You'll notice that on the left here there is a tick. The green tick means that there is a guaranteed fill with that word. And as you do the fill, it gradually assesses each word in more and more depth and checks whether or not a fill is possible if you use that word. So if I use a green tick word, I'm guaranteed that the fill will not reach a dead end and I should be able to reach the end with some selection of words. And the bottom here, it shows forced words. These are words that you have to use if you use a particular word. So I use the word spa, and it's also showing in the grid here, I'd be forced to use poco and acorn. If I choose the other word, I can see here I've got a different forced word. So that doesn't look very good, so I'm going to stick with spa here. A little acorn sounds fine. Sometimes there are no forced words, but there may be forced choices. This will show me forced choices. Now here you can see that if I use this word, I'll have to choose one of these three words here and one of this set of words here. So this is not too restrictive at the moment, but can be useful to see what using a particular word will mean in future. Once you get into the fill, there'll be quite a lot of forced words and you get this listed down here and you can select which one you want to get a really nice fill. If you have a clue database, you can just click show clues and that will show you any clues in the database. If I double click, that will use the clue and it'll be there when you finish the grid. So this way you can go on and fill a puzzle very quickly by choosing each word in turn. You'll see that it takes a relatively short time for it to turn all these ones green. If it was a more complex grid, it might take a little while and you'd see the 
at the tick marks change from red to green as it gradually checks each word in turn and removes any words that would lead to a dead end. Clicking in the grid allows you to choose a different word slot. If I right click, that will change the direction on that square. Left click will show me the horizontal word. Here you can see self-controlled has a red tick because it hasn't quite yet worked out whether or not that's fillable. So that's a warning that if you used self-controlled, you might get in problems filling it down the line, whereas these ones are rather easier to fill around. If you're happy for the program to make the choice, you can click auto pick and it will just automatically fill the grid for you. Of course, you don't have to fill a whole grid at once. You can just fill a particular area. So if I didn't like this uh, top right hand corner here, I could say select the parts of it that I don't like, then try to refill them. So let me just delete those. On the toolbar, you can use the auto fill button if you drop down, there's a choice of autofill or manual fill. So here I'm going to autofill this corner, and that will show you a fill. If I click the right arrow, that'll just show me the next fill that it can find. But there could be quite a lot of fills. One of the things that professional grid filler can do is search through all the possible fills and try and find the best one. So if I use this down arrow here, I can use non-stop filling and choose 10 best scoring or 100 best scoring, and that will search through the fills to find the best ones ranked by the scores of the words in the word list. If I click 10 best scoring, it's analysed them and got the he's. So here we've got a mean score of 40. If I go left, it'll show ones that have slightly lower scores. They've all got very similar scores apart from when I get back to here. This way you can easily find the best fills for a particular place in the grid, uh, view which ones you like, and then accept it. So that one looks okay to me, I'll accept that one. You can also fill rebus puzzles where there's more than one letter in a square. So maybe I want to have a themed puzzle with the word letters cat there and there. I can go to square properties, set the letters cat, and then I'll have those cats in those two squares. Now if I auto fill the grid, I get a fill using the cat in the word. So here I've got educate and educationalist. Here I've got multiplicative and scattered. You can change the rebus words in the fill grid window. If I go to fill grid settings and go to the special tab, it's identified cat as already being in the grid, but I could add other things here if I wanted to. You can increase the score so that you preferentially fill things with your rebus letters, and you can also make more clever specialty puzzles where you do substitutions of various different letters with other different letters. There are many other advanced options you can change. On the scoring tab, it allows you to set a score for a particular range of word lengths or for the longest word in the grid, or you can specify your own particular word range to use if you wanted length one to four to be a minimum score of 10, you can do that. The advanced tab allows you to control about where the filler starts, about how it iterates, um, some of the preferences for how it works, and you can tweak the settings as you like. For experts who like to tweak settings, there are some extra tabs here with settings about how it does the filling and the timings. If you don't want to worry about all these complexities, you can completely ignore them and just use the defaults. You can fill from multiple word lists if you select multiple lists here. Say I wanted to use cities and default, I can hold down control and select the two. If that's something I want to do frequently, I might want to save that as a setting. If I click on the drop down on fill here, I can click save settings as and save these settings. So maybe I'll call this cities. And then if I want to use that particular set of settings in future, I can select it from the menu up here. You can also do themed fills. If I select a theme list here, say astronomy, and I fill with manual word selection, it now shows at the top the preferentially listed words in my theme word lists. So I can choose the particular ones that I want to use. 
Of course, not all word slots will have theme words in them, uh, and they're shown in a different colour in the grid so that you can see which ones are which. So maybe I want to choose another astronomy word for this slot across here, so I'll click on there, and I might use Halley's Comet. And you can go on and do this theme to fill, choosing themed words where you can, choosing words from the other word list where you can't. You can, of course, also fill other puzzle styles. Here's a large cryptic type grid. You can fill it, autofill will automatically fill it. And you can make use of all the features that are also available in the standard filling programs. For example, being able to refill from selected words, delete words, edit the scores, and so on. So that's about it for this quick tour of some of the powerful features of the professional grid filler.